Hey, man himself. How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? What's going on, man? I'm good, man. Look at you, brother. Every time I see you, man, you look like you're getting younger, man. What's going on, you bro? You good too, bro. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, no, it's you been, didn't tell it's me. It's been a minute, man. It it's been so... Not a minute. It's been a long time. Yeah, so. I know, right? Plus... Uh, there was COVID in the middle as well. And it's just, oh man, it actually has been. It's been a while. It's been a while. But it's good to see you smiling, bro. It's good to see you still doing your thing. Always, you know, that's, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome, you know. But yeah, look, I wanted to have a chat with you, bro, you know, because I've always sort of admired what what you do as an artist, mm -hmm. right? What you stand for and just the, um, how do I put this? That you, you just seem so comfortable in your lane. Right, it's almost oh. like no one, no one can, no one can make you move too quick or too slow. You're just moving at your own pace. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you seem to be hitting all the goals, you know, uh, along the way. So I want to have a chat about oh. that. But you know, there, there are going to be a lot of people that that don't know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So people from South Africa, um, people maybe in Melbourne. Uh, so so we'll start off by by introducing yourself. You know, and um, where were you born? Where were you raised? I was born in uh, Sydney, man, in Sydney, Australia, you know, but South African heritage, obviously. I was mm -hmm. born a year after my parents migrated to Australia. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, say I was conceived in the air, born to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man of the world, I'm a man of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah man. But I mean, uh, very, very strong um, South African roots and. and you know, very strongly connected to South Africa. Yeah. Obviously, I, I think when you come to Australia, man, Australia is made up of, it's made up of other cultures, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That, that's, a, that's the Australia that mm. I know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I was born here in, in Sydney, but, you know, and, and I grew up in Western Sydney, so I kind of represent. Oh, wow. Uh, right, that, right. Okay. I, I okay. have that kind of uh, ingrained in me as well. Yeah. yeah. What was it like, sort of like um, growing up in Sydney? Um, back in those days, was it? I, I imagine it would be way different to what it is right now. Yeah. Yeah, de definitely, man. But I, I think because I grew up out west, it was it was very multicultural, you know. Yeah, that's right. So I I had I had the experience of of mixing with a lot of different cultures even from a young age. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, man, growing growing up in Sydney for me, it's it's really what you make it, you know. And I guess it's also mm. like what your what your parents teach you, you know, mm. like what your parents teach you mm. about other people. And how to interact with other people and people in other cultures. So, I mean, that yeah. was, yeah, my idea of growing up in Sydney is it's it's, it's pretty much cultural. True, true, true. Um, so, in terms of music, in terms of artistry, something happens to you when you're really young, right? Around eight years old. Do you remember what happened? Sort of. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I remember just being at a family party and like uh, a prominent. Uh, figure in the music scene was there mm -hmm. and he, he I was always the one that was like performing at the you know at the parties or just doing my thing you know as mm -hmm. I think naturally when you have that in you yeah. that, that performance kind of like aspect in you you do it at the family party yeah you know? and then it's it becomes a thing because your family learns that you can do it yeah so what you're doing yeah, true every that. party you know what I mean mm -hmm. So I, I think mm -hmm. I had that in me, and then there was a prominent figure that was there, that was working in the music scene. Yeah, and and then he ended up kind of recruiting me along with my sisters for uh, a group that he wanted to put together, and then pitch to labels and stuff. So oh, wow. we became this this group called Sensitiv Sensitivity, and I was mentored by a great rapper in Sydney named Milesy Miles at the time. Right. And he uh, mentored okay. me in like songwriting and wow. and just being in the studio, and so I got to learn that that kind of and see that kind of um, you know part of the industry from uh, such a young age. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. right, and, right, okay. Do you remember being, when you? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when you wrote, wrote your first song? Man, it would have been around that age is when I like yeah. got to pen and <laughs> sit with him and like pen like my first rap. You know? Yeah, 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 and I still do it. Bro, yeah. like, I still do this rap like, <laughs> of to course. this day because I think yeah. it was such a, uh, you know, like a prolific like time for yeah. me, you know, like to, yeah. to experience like working with one of the best rappers in Sydney at the time. Yeah, and, yeah. And learning how to write at that age, it's mm. still it's 
with me. And even what we were writing about at the time, I know, I think it's something that I can still relate to. You know? yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right. Okay. So I, I guess I sort of, uh, I don't remember when exactly I, I, I came to know you, but in terms of your discography, yeah. I really got introduced to your music around i think you released alley cat i think it's around 2014 2015 yeah it, it, around there some like, i mean 2013 yeah. i don't know man. yeah some, i think that's 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 um that's when i really you know started getting into your music i was like man yeah. this guy's really really talented you know so so uh, and that's when i started also um knowing you as this alias young boy old soul yeah. Right. So, so talk me through your discography, bro. So, so uh, was that the first album that you released? Yeah, that was the first album, which is, I think it came out in like 2012, the first album. Yeah. Oh, and it okay, was so even earlier. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The first single was Love Mathematics, I think. All right. Which was the lead, okay. lead single of the album. So, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. song, man, like, did a lot, a lot for me as far as like being able to travel internationally with mm. music. Yeah, so that that was the first album, and then after that album um, was Experience, which was uh, sec the second album. And yeah. Then so Experience. So, sorry to cut you off. So so yeah. Experience came like much much later, right? So a few a yeah. few years or yeah, a few when? years. Yeah, yeah, a few few years later. I can't remember exactly okay. what when I released Experience, but it might have been like twenty seventeen, maybe. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. Well, Somewhere what was the there. influence? What was the inspiration behind um, experience? Because I'll tell you, when I when I heard it, it kind of reminded me of um, Kaleidoscope Dream, oh, Miguel. Oh, dope, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I love, man. It, I it the was the same sort of feel. It was definitely like a bit more um, experimental R and B, you know. So yeah. like still keeping um, that aspect of old, old school R&B because I just, I love old school R&B. Yeah. So keeping that aspect of it in the music, but then just going a bit harder with the drums, like experimenting with the 808 sounds, you know, yeah. what, experimenting with what was new as well and mixing the two. And it was a bit of, a bit of funk as well, you know, like. Yeah, to, yeah. I think that definitely with that album, and I mean with all my albums, I always have the, idea of like how's this gonna sound live because i have a live band mm. so i always make albums that i i know like when i play these live they're gonna like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i got and you it's gonna do yeah. this justice you know and it's not gonna sound it's it's gonna have that element of funk and like old school kind of r&b so that it can sound really like nice live yeah so yeah like, right yeah. okay okay so what what happened to black magic uh, I just coming. Oh, bro. So I'm still, I'm still working coming? on this album. Yeah, I'm still oh, working right. on this project, okay. man. Okay, okay. cool, cool, <laughs> it's cool, cool. It's, so it's definitely like in the works. I've I've got two projects that I'm working on at the moment. So there yeah. will be one that that is gonna come out before Black because Black Magic one is when you title something that way, then I mean it's it's gotta be good, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, well, walk us through the title because I I imagine a lot of people don't know. I mean, I know why you've named it like that, but but. Walk us through. I mean, so, so why Black Magic? I, I titled it Black Black Magic because obviously, you know, I represent, you know, my um, my culture. I want to represent my culture with my music and represent, you know, uh, you know the black demographic, man. It's really, it's important mm. for me to stand, stand for something and stand for that, you know? Sure. So, so that's, it's BLK. And then MGC is my, are my initials, which is mm. Michael. I don't want to say my middle name, but it starts with a G. Yeah. <laughs> and then my surname is Champion. So, Bro, you know, why did you want to say a middle name? Like, that's a dope <laughs> middle name. That's a dope middle name. Nah, don't worry about I think that's dope, bro. Or maybe if you Google, everyone just jump on Google if you want to find <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't think you're right, right. So, so what year are you sort of wanting to drop that? Uh, no, Black Magic. Mm, Black that's Magic. Coming out, that's, that's coming out next year, man. Like okay. early next, early next year. Yeah. Yeah. So are we are we to expect the same sort of eclectic sound, similar to the experience, or sort of like what are you going with this time? Black Magic is a bit more evolved, you know. It's a bit more yeah. up with what's what's happening now uh, and what's also socially now. conscious. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely oh, with the, the sound. songwriting, but okay, sorry, the, sorry, sorry. the yeah. sound is definitely, um, you know, it's going along what's, with what's current now, what's okay. happening now as okay. far as the sound. Definitely, like, 
a few Afro soul influenced um, songs on that album. Yeah, you know, yeah. A more um, a little bit of like the Katrin Katrinata kind of mm, feel mm, as well mm, on that okay. album. And then, but that's there's a, there's a project that's coming out before that. Before that's that. more iron, iron, like sticking to the R and B soul kind of sound. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, right. That's, that's, you always seem very. That's in kind of gap year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, bro. You you always seem very sort of like comfortable within your space right like um you know I, I see a lot of artists like when a new sound comes out like they 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 immediately switch their sound completely you yeah. know and you know but what what is it about you or what keeps you so grounded bro and just know is it knowing your audience knowing your sound but i don't know i think you, you're one of the only artists that i've seen in australia that have really perfected like your your sound your image just where you go and that type of thing so uh, how are you managing to do that bro man I'll, i really just go with what i'm feeling at the time and i, I just want to deliver something that's true to who i am at the time mm. you know and and yeah really i mean to be honest it's art so i'm going with god yeah. you know it's yeah. like really you get the message and then you deliver the message and, and i mm -hmm. think with, with my music you know my image it's it's definitely i just want to deliver something i've always had the idea of wanting to deliver something that's true because mm, i really okay. feel like i want to be a man of the truth you know so wow. and, and truth in all aspects of life you know so when it comes yeah. to my music which is which is something that i feel really blessed to have the talent to be able to do i yeah, want, yeah. want there to be a sense of truth in it that you, you're receiving something that's authentic yeah uh, and that, uh, i think that's that's something that's important to me so it's, i always kind of keep it at the foundation of when i'm creating yeah and, and the foundation of my artistry is just making sure that i'm i'm being truthful you know right right oh, yeah you know yeah so so in your career i imagine there's still going to be a whole lot of milestones you know moving forward yeah. but um what can you tell me about your career and sort of international and japan sort of what what, what happened then how did you get involved with that man that, because i think there's there, there are a lot of artists that sort of because they're independent they feel like you know they they don't really have you know much power can't really get much done that type of thing yeah for sure man i think it, it like the whole relationship with japan mm. it definitely came from having the thought of it first while in the studio oh. recording oh. working on the music there was just always the thought of it's like we birthed that idea into the songs because you know it's, it's just that, that thought of like i want to get this music to japan i want to get it to travel overseas mm, you know? mm, mm. and i remember like releasing this when i released the single love mathematics uh, it was like within a month a label from japan somehow the song got there and then a label from japan contacted me saying they want to put it onto a compilation oh, wow. so uh, wow. we worked out, out the deal we worked out the deal I, I licensed it and i was working on a the young boy old soul album at the time so i mm. mentioned that to them i'm working on my album you know and i would love to send you my album title listen to once it's finished so i followed through with that finished the album mastered it sent it to them and they were like we want a must we want to license the whole album oh, wow so we man ended up, you know making the deal and then, like licensing the whole album and then next minute i was like in japan doing shows what? and uh, touring in all the stores kind of like signing yeah. cds and oh like, wow and, that's crazy yeah. that's crazy bro right all right so can you explain to me and explain to other people who don't know what do you mean by licensing what do you mean by by licensing your songs yeah, man. So a, a company from Japan, uh, yeah. which was, it's, it's like a, a label, you know, mm -hmm. and they deal with imports. So they signed a, a deal with me where specifically for the Japanese region. And, and yep. at this time, the album was actually like out already yep. when yep. they decided to license it for Japan. So mm. they specifically, I specifically had to take it down in the Japanese region. Oh, and and then they they relicensed the album and they released it through their label. So obviously they uh, will work out a deal where there's a percentage given to them for mm. the the marketing that they'll do on that end. 
you know but it will it gives right. me a wind a door into japan you know and some ground some people on the ground that are going to work my project in japan yeah so yeah they, yeah so that that was the i licensed it to them in order for them to be able to do that and in order for me to be able to have people on the floor in japan like working on the pro, on the project and getting me the shows and getting me indoors where i couldn't get myself because i didn't have the relationships uh yeah. right okay yeah. okay uh, yeah. yeah so what's your relationship with them today man it's like we're like family oh. now you know oh, so yeah. every time every time i've released like with the experience album we licensed it in japan i went there i did the shows as well and with these next two projects just expect you'll be seeing me in japan yeah. next year wow bro wow yeah. okay so why why didn't you ever go with a major major like no yeah. i just i've i've actually never like really built relationships with major labels in australia uh mm. Be, because you know i think my i'm i'm very stuck on what creating you know like creating what i want to create okay yeah you know and and i don't know i've never even even now i think about r&b in australia and i'm like i don't think that there's anyone that's really knows how to take it on properly mm, okay you know? I so, I so i definitely prefer to like stay in that lane and and be the guy that takes it on for myself so that i can learn to take it on for others mm. you know mm. and have the have 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 being being have been through the process you know i can definitely build something now that if i wanted to i could definitely take on others under my wing and of course and and be the label and be yeah. that go, go between mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. yeah man r&b is still very it's it's still at like a very baby kind of stage here in australia because it's not the most popular when it comes to australian artists you know i think r&b is huge in general it's yeah. huge but it's it's more australians definitely look to more like international artists when it comes to R&B and I think it's now we're at a stage mm. where hip hop hip hop is finally you know it's being the light is being shone on Australian artists and Australian this Australian population is starting to take hip hop more seriously and and the local hip hop scene but I think when it comes to R&B we're still like bridging that gap yeah so, uh, I think yeah. that I, that that sort of means though Mike that you're uh, um you're a pioneer whether you like it or not I like you you're definitely a pioneer bro um and the other thing is yeah i i definitely think that a lot of people can can benefit from either working with you or being mentored by you i'll tell you an interesting thing right um yeah. there i i once saw uh, i was reading someone's bio and you were one of the names that they referenced that they've opened for you know what i mean like like they were basically bragging like yo they've shared the stage with you or went before you you know what i'm saying and i was like yo Crazy that's so me, dope bro. yeah i'm saying that's pretty dope bro it really is dope and it is more than one person that i saw like actually being like yeah like they'd list these people and i was, I was like i know that name that's that's my great that that's dope man that's dope so i think i think yeah there there're definitely people that regardless of whether or not you're signed to a major or whatever just based off of your work Yeah. right like that the public really but they're like yeah this guy's doing the damn thing Man, you know you can't deny it on bro like at the at the end of the day the labels need the people you know and mm. and, and, and pe- we as people need each other yeah so yeah. if 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 you're an artist that's delivering something of value to people and not to, not needing to come through labels and come through the machine but if you just trying to do something that's delivering value to someone else's life mm. then then some of the people are going to pay attention to that because you know that's i mean there's people in my life that I need to pay attention to sure. because they bring value into my life mm. there's a lot of teachers that I if we can teach each other then you man you don't need the machine yeah. you know we really got yeah. each other. it's all about sure. building the building community you know yeah, and, yeah. Um, i think a lot of independent artists succeed nowadays because they're so great at building community you know yeah snap okay uh so when you when you market yourself bro do you market yourself as just an artist or a a a, a person of color like especially like within the australian context how do you how do you go about marketing yourself no, uh definitely as just a, an artist but i mean more like man I, 
I I I really take the whole color idea out of it, you know, mm, because, mm, because um, I'm at a, a stage in life where it's like I'm I'm more of like a humanitarian, you know, and and yeah. more there's too much going on in the world for us to be separating ourselves, mm. you know, and then when when I see everything that's going on in the world now, it really affects what message I want to bring. So I really don't want to separate myself from people or just because of the color of my skin, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's important that I uh, definitely stay open um, to, you know, all demographics, all nationalities, all races. That's, that's something, this is, it's, it's, it's I mean, the, the, the idea of creating art and, you know, uh, music for me, it's something that can definitely unite people. Mm. So I think I want, I definitely aim to use my art and my craft to bring people together yeah. rather than, you know, yeah. differentiate myself or separate myself from people. But that doesn't mean that I don't talk about my experiences, mm. you know, in the world, because I know when you look at someone, you instantly think you can relate to them. So you want to hear their story. So mm. I definitely uh, try to deliver my story in a way that's empowering my community rather than you know placing the blame on others yeah have you ever felt that you missed out on certain opportunities because of your background at all uh no i don't think so man mm. i don't think so okay. but i think um i don't know I'm, my mindset has always been on like it comes down to what you're doing mm. So it always, it always comes down to what you are doing as a person for me. Mm. And if opportunities were missed, it's because, you know, maybe I was lacking somewhere. Yeah. So I, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I really can't put the responsibility on other people. You know, it's, it's mm. really what you do is going to define what you become. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, that's how I look at things. That's how I teach, you know, like when, when I pass that on to my kids, man, I'm like, you know, yeah. what yeah. you do is going to define what you do. Right. Yeah. I gotta say, bro, like I uh, I think it's only it's it's you, J. Cole, probably you, J. Cole, Kendrick, actually and and no 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 not Drake. So only only three artists that I've seen in the whole world that have basically avoided the BS that happens online. Right. Oh, so okay. so there <laughs> so nowadays what's happening is as you there's like gender wars, there's this, there's that, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to <laughs> want to put their opinions out there, bro. You know, people are arguing online yeah. there, you know. And <laughs> one thing I realized about that, because this girl actually like, said to me, right, as an artist, she's like, Man, now because of some of the things you said, I just look at your music so differently. Yeah. You know, she's like, I just can't help it, you know. And I was that's the Time that I was like, oh, I think I made a huge mistake here, you know. But it's like, yeah, you, you. I think just the three of you. I was actually thinking about it the other day, like I've just avoided the BS. Like, how was that deliberate? Deliberate for you, like not to be involved in uh, online space and the messy conversations, or I think, it's or maybe just, we, or maybe it's, maybe we haven't found. Maybe you have. Maybe we haven't. We haven't found some of that content. I think. I think it's just this like self awareness to be honest, man. Like yeah. having a self awareness of, of being able to I mean that that's the beauty of being an artist is like you get to express those things in your music, you know? Mm. I don't we really don't need to express these things in a verbal argument or getting involved in things. We can take a step back and look at it from a different point of view and then really write it and articulate it in a way mm. that you know, is is mm. makes more sense. You yeah. know, because it's not it's not heated in the moment. I mean, I I definitely, especially on these next few projects, like with Black Magic Pro, it's definitely me. A lot of me, like looking at the world as an outsider and giving my, you know, vo voicing how I feel mm. or mm. how other people fit, might feel. You know, so it's it's. I think it's just that self awareness of being able to. Okay, I'm not gonna get involved because my, my my journey and and what I'm trying to do is bigger than this moment. Oh wow, wow, bro! Yeah, you know, wow, wow. it's definitely Snap. it's definitely bigger than this moment, man. It's just it's it's um, yeah, you know, it feels it feels bigger than the moment. It always feels yeah. bigger than the moment. From, oh you know? man.
And I should take a page out of your book, man. <laughs> Snap. Because I think, like, I, I look at, I look at, like, you, your page, and I'm just like, you know, when I think of you, I think of music. I don't think of yeah, anything else, you know, which is, I think, as an artist. And, and also, I think you're an artist artist. I think that other artists appreciate you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and um, I can see uh, Israel Cruz, just, he popped in before. Um, I know he's, yeah. a, he's an artist as well. Have you guys worked together, actually? We haven't, man. Oh, oh I mean, we actually, we have. We, we worked on, man, like back in the days, we did get in the studio, I think, once together. But, man, I, I have much respect for Iz because he's, like, also one of the pioneers. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and most definitely. And, and, and definitely a pioneer. just such a cr creative mind, bro. Like, the, the mind, you have to respect the mind of Israel because he's I think people, creative. I think people like Israel were ahead of their time. Definitely. You know, I, I really Perfect. think so. Like, like, the things that they were doing in Australia, like, at that time. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah, yeah, definitely a pioneer as well. Do you, did you ever work with uh, uh, Audius as well? Do you know Audius and Tawarin? I know, I know, Aud, but we've actually never recorded anything together oh, either. Oh, snap, okay. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, like, we just um, did a, like, collaboration with JBL. Yeah, yeah. And they, they had, like, been doing stuff with Audius. Like, this is very recent. So this is... With wow, the, bro. The moment, yeah, bro. yeah. We did a collaboration with with my family, with JBL. And and then this uh, video that they posted of, like, a documentary, a small documentary that they did popped up. And Audius is, like, the producer for it. Oh, and I was like, wow. Oh, man. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. It gave me life. It gave me life because I haven't seen Audius for such a long time yeah. or spoken to him or like had a moment to connect with him that seeing him in that space i'm like yeah. man i just love that this guy is here in his yeah. you know he's sitting on his throne still you yeah know? yeah, yeah that, was, that was inspiring for me man no definitely. most definitely no that's pretty dope the other thing is when it comes to your music and your image and just the things that you're putting on there you know you've got a what appears to be a very creative family yeah definitely. you know um, but at the same time, it's like, it's not, that's why I say, I really like the way that you guys do things. It's not, it's not shoved down everyone's throats, you know, no one's trying to say this is the perfect family. <laughs> no, 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 not, you're not trying to sell us that, you know? And so we're able to appreciate it a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? And yet again, is that, is that deliberate? Is that that self-awareness thing? Because now you're dealing with more than one personality, Yeah. but there still sure. seems to be order. You know what I mean? For sure. Because it's real life man honestly for us it's like we're just we're just using what has what has been given you know yeah. and it's honestly what you see is is real life this is how it really is mm. yeah not yeah something that it's definitely not something else the family the dynamic is definitely not something that is um has been has been manufactured you know it's just like uh, yeah, what you yeah. see is is really what it is yeah you know? yeah yeah, no yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's really yeah. what it is, man. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about um, getting your music to South Africa and maybe doing some shows in South Africa? Or have you have you done that before? For sure, man. Like, definitely that is... With the sound that I have for the Black Magic project, the, that project, I'm definitely going to try and shift into South Africa and push over there and, and also try and collaborate with some South African artists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now that'll be dope, bro. I, re I reckon you'd kill it at the um, the annual Cape Town Jazz Festival. Oh, man. Because, um, sure. yeah, yeah, because they, they, they're very, like, uh, live show heavy as well. And I think, yeah, you definitely kill it there. You know, South Africa has a very different crowd, bro. Like, very, very different crowd um, to, yeah. to Australia, yeah. right? I had to sort of, like, get my head around, okay, what, what works in South Africa? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And what doesn't no, work here. you, man. Yeah, definitely. but I, I you know, think they definitely have a very high standard of of what music is, you know, and yeah. and and I don't know, just having that. I mean, it's it's the blackness, yeah, man, for like sure, having for sure, bro, that, you know, for sure, for and sure. being able to hear that in hear that in the music over there is yeah. very important. Like, we want to hear the, you know, the, exactly. the roots, man. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, so yet again, South Africa right now, what's blowing up is I'm a piano, mm -hmm. so. Like I said before, there's all these trends you've managed to, you know, not really. I mean, if you do get involved with like a new sound, you sort of put yeah. your own spin to it. Yeah. Have you thought about doing an Ama Piano song? Of course, man. Of course I yeah. have. You know? Are you working uh, on it, one at the moment? Or? It's, it, it's, I mean, it comes from, I am actually. Okay. Like, I'm working, yeah, on, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on my own take on it. I'm not going to say it's like 
you know, hands down on what our piano is, but mm-hmm. it's definitely my own take on it because being from an R&B background, I can never get away from, from like vocally doing something that has an R&B feel, mm. you know? And, and, and I just, I love to like throw the harmonies in my songs and I love to throw yeah, like yeah. The R&B melodies in my songs, but right, definitely yeah. be mixing the two worlds is something I'm working on. Yeah. Right, okay, okay. Um, you know, when it comes to success in music, you know, people look at it sort of differently, yeah. right? I, I personally look at success as, you know, progressively working towards something worthy, like that, that's how I look at it. But, but what about yourself? Like, what, is, what does success in music look like? Or does it look like sort of like you've already achieved it or something you're working towards or it's the journey itself? Or what is success to, to my champion? Man, it's definitely um, being able to evolve through the generations, you know, mm. transcend generations. Definitely being able to evolve as an artist is success to me because I just feel like it It just always keeps you in the playing field when you can never look at yourself as what you had achieved then and get stuck there. Yeah, you yeah. Know? That's just something that I, do, I never wanted to do is be stuck in an, an era or like a time of music yeah. because... Yeah my music is just, is going to evolve as I evolve as a human being, you know? So I, and, and, and it's just my, it's, it's the tool that I have, you know, to be able to have a voice through that evolution. So that's mm-hmm. what I use it for, man. And I think that that's success because it's just going to keep you, it's going to keep you being able to do it for your entire life or forever, however long you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Is, is making sure that you're evolving you're open to what's new you know and 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 what's coming as much as embracing what's been yeah 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 no for sure bro so in terms of like uh, i don't know whether or not you saw israel said that uh he he's working on our piano songs and he's actually just said to himself that he wants to work with that's, you, you know, so that's, that's pretty I'm dope. Is, <laughs> yeah. I know we were, I, we, I know we've been DM, DMing each other, like talking, talking, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely down for it, man. 100%. Yeah. Right. Right. Bro. What about the, you know, in terms of like, uh, as an artist, do you ever feel any pressure to, you know, um, um, keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, like within, within music to sort of give the impression that you've made it or anything like that? Nah, not at all, man. Like honestly, I don't, I don't feel that pressure at all. Yeah, you know. I mean, there, there's always times when you're when when that that comes to you. Yeah. But in those moments, like when that has come to me in my career, I just get it. I just get in the studio and create. You right. know. And, okay. Yeah, okay. And when I create, it's it's it takes away all of that for me because I feel so in the moment, like in purpose. I feel mm. so in my purpose when I'm creating that I just, I don't even worry about trying to keep up with anybody. Yeah. Just, just, you know, like being able to create is keeping up, you know? But are you ever looking around and going, man, that person's really killing it, like, and then look at yourself and be like, man, I need to really push. No, I don't think so. Because I have a, my, I have my, definitely have my own, um, I, like I have my own standard for myself. Mm. You know, you know what I mean. Like I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not concerned about trying to keep up with other people's standards. It's just like, be the best you can be for yourself. You know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's re- it's really. I don't know. There's a lot going on nowadays, man. And if you pay attention to it, you're gonna go crazy. Yeah, so it's just, for sure. You for have sure. to be so, so. You have to be so honed in and intentional with your own purpose that yeah. it 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 feels like godly you know what mm-hmm. i mean like if, if if to me like my my intention with music and just i mean just with living mm-hmm. it's, it's so intentional that I, f- I feel the god in it that i want to just go with that feeling rather than paying attention to things that are going to take me wow. away from that you know? oh, bro yeah. wow so so normally you walk into a studio what's your process do you what what's the first thing you do? So Mike walks into the studio. Man, usually I would just like get comfortable with the room first before I even do anything. Mm. And it's really just like 
really just creating um just creating like an energy in the room that's opening up the idea of like going to create something mm -hmm. you know and that and that could mean like having a conversation that is going to inspire me before doing any work yeah you know? it's really important for me to like i love having conversations in the studio space because it really just it puts me in it it turns on my creative brain man to, to uh -uh. have a conversation if i'm going into a session I re it's very rare that i'll just jump in and like let's go let's make the song it's, it's never like that yeah. it's really like yeah. i want to conversate and get to know if there's someone else in the room then i want to have a conversation about them and get to know their experience mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and be inspired you know to create something that's that is going to relate to them or relate to myself or have a conversation that you know when you have a conversation with something that sparks an idea in yeah. your mind like yeah i love yeah. to have those, those kinds of conversations in the studio before even creating just to have the energy in the room kind of right yeah yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Turn, let's yeah. turn, let's turn let's turn on the energy in the room yeah. to creativity so yeah to create something amazing you know yeah. yeah so if you could ever share that experience with someone i guess i'm talking in terms of collaboration you know who who would you want to step into the studio with bro i don't know <laughs> Just so many people. I want uh, yeah. To okay. Let let let's say let's say, talk, let's say name three from the states for starters right. that you'd want to get into studio with. Uh, uh, I don't know. I listen to a lot of underground like people. Mm. So uh, like Alex Isley, I love. Okay. Um, okay. Um, um, like Leva Leva and Kelly is. Oh, he's not from the states. He's from like the Netherlands. Okay. But I know he produced like a lot of um, Beyonce's a lot of. Did a lot of production on Beyonce's new album. Mm -mm. Um, and then a third else, man. Um, um, lucky day. Like lucky day. Who's lucky day? D Mile. Lucky day. Like lucky day is actually coming out here for a concert. Like sold sold out. Sold, yeah. Sold out. Yes. Yeah. Something that's happening next year. Mm. It'll be his first time in Australia, but. He's just kind of like a soul R&B artist, and I think mm. even though he's he's commercial, like he's he's received some com kind of commercial success. Um, his music's still very like yeah, soul R&B. Yeah. Also, yeah. Ari, Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox is I'm a huge fan yeah. of Ari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge fan of Ari Lennox just for having that holding down like real neo soul mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. grown, grown folk music you know oh I, I for sure yeah. yeah you see this is exactly what i was talking about about you being an artist artist you know just based off of those names that you've named you know um what about uh, name three who are in south africa man uh cash cpt definitely okay. i don't know okay you know, yeah yeah yeah. CPT, yeah 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 i think he's like Man, when I, when I go onto his page and yeah. how consistent he is with music, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's definitely someone that I would love to collaborate with. Okay. Also, based on the bars, like yeah. also based on, on the content, you know. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. He's definitely something, someone that I would Casper. Like I would love yeah. to collaborate with Casper Nervous just because, yeah, I'm not that quiet sound. Like yeah, I would love yeah, to yeah, make yeah. something that's like soulful, like quiet, you know. Like yeah, something yeah, like yeah. would be a vibe. Um, who else in South Africa, man? Uh, uh, you know who would have been dope? May rest in peace. I always wanted you guys to to actually collaborate. You and AKA. I don't know. Why. I always I always <laughs> thought that was gonna be such a dope collaboration. Would, man, you know what I mean? I love man. Honestly, I, I love AKA. Nasty C for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. I did. Yeah. I did like. Support. You did the show, didn't you? I did do support for the nasty C. How was that? Australia. I was all right, man. Like, I don't know when you, like, honestly, when you know who he is mm -hmm. and how great he is, mm. and then to see the reception that he got here, it's, it was kind of like, you know, he, he probably, you know, he probably would have come out feeling a bit deflated from really? the reception that he got here no, in Australia. Bro. But I mean, it just really goes to show, it puts things into perspective, which is, if you're an artist like me, I think you could take that as, a, as man, okay, we need to work here. You know, mm. there's work to be done here. Mm, 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 mm. You know, because when you see 
if you look at the socials and you see everything that is managed to achieve in South Africa, even in the States, mm. you know, but then you can't take it. I, I think you just can't take for granted that that's what's happening all over the world. You know, you really, we've got to hone in on, on and be specific with how we're targeting places yeah. nowadays. And yeah. I think that's in that me that I, that's something that I learned from that experience, you know? Uh, yeah, man. But I mean, see, it was amazing, though. It was amazing to support him, like be on a stage yeah. with him. Yeah, you know, just I mean, be on the same stage as him. I'm saying I was on yeah. stage with him. But yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing. Right. You see, and this is what I was talking about about also um, like understanding the crowd. Yeah. Right, because like I said, the way I perform in Australia, I try to perform like that in South Africa, and they weren't really feeling it. So I had to change the way you know my approach. You know, um, so it's still presenting the same content, but just presenting it in a way that this crowd that's used to people being engaging on stage and really, you know, giving them a show. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I think it's so important. Like that. That is one thing. Like what was what you're speaking about is mm. one thing that I've always tried to take into consideration with li live shows and doing live shows. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's understanding that this audience is, you know, it's not up to the audience to participate with you. It's up to you to be a great entertainer mm. and, and really engage the audience. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's not their responsibility. Yeah. I've seen artists really like disconnect themselves from the audience when the audience is not vibing. But yeah. the decision to be an artist is that responsibility is on you to, mm. to you know, like, change your show to suit of course or or, yes. or, or you know deli deliver something that's going to be entertaining for them and you figure out how to do it not mm. let the audience mm. figure out how to take you yeah yeah and, and like that, yeah man i think that's that's something i don't know I, I really take that into consideration when performing is is like you got a job to do here and of if course. the audience is not like you then you know, you need to level up your skills, not, yeah. the, other way, not the other way around. Yeah, I'm true sure. that, true that. Yeah. But what do you think about Tyler? Oh, man, like, what she's doing is amazing. Yeah. I, think, I, I really think, um, you know, like, that opportunity doesn't come for a lot of South African artists. Uh, so uh. so to, to see, yeah, I think, like, with the eyes on Africa now, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon, but the opportunity to like move over to another country and, and be pushed in that way, I think, man, roll with it because it's just, when you're the, f I mean, I'm not saying she's the first, but when you are like at pioneering that movement, it's only gonna open up the movement more for other artists to come through after her. So someone has to, someone has to pioneer that, you know? Yeah, yeah pioneer that and and you know I, I will say like i don't say with the on piano vibe like i don't like how a lot of like american artists are jumping on it are jumping mm. on the vibe like it's i mean it's man it's cultural you know so yeah. like, there should be some there should be some kind of like level of respect for if you are going to jump on it how you do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, man that song like in general like water is mm. An incredible, song. It's a perfectly yeah. written song. It's yeah, yeah. It's an incredible song. You know, it deserves the credibility that it's receiving. Yeah. So, in terms of you know, we look at what's happening with Tyler. You know, we look yeah. at you know, she's going to America. She's doing shows with like Jimmy Fallon and stuff. You know, we want to see obviously Australian artists go do the same thing. Yeah. What do you think is missing from Australia? Because it's clear that there's something because we have a lot of talent out here. Yeah. Right. But in comparison to other countries, I don't really see us really exporting a lot of our musical talent. Yeah. What do you think is missing, bro? I think it's just the relationship between someone needs to be in the in, in between, like bridging that gap, you know, and, and it, it needs to be a, a body that is like committed to solely bridging the gap, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, I, I just think the more that I've, we can build communities that are getting behind the Australian music. That's gonna that's going to change things. You know, yeah, it's gonna really bridge, bridge the gap. Is bringing it back back to the ground and working with the people rather than the corporations. You know, and, and right? Okay, okay. Getting, getting the people to really like really have their artists back. You know, 
and right. see themselves in the artists. I, I think the same way, like even when you look at New Zealand, man, the way that they support local by like having their music playing on mainstream radios, putting them on TV, you know, mm. getting them in film roles, acting, all that. Just you're seeing the artists in ways that, you know, uh, it's really putting the, the, taking the music, the industry to a higher level as far as the caliber of the way that they support the artists. And yeah. I think that's something we really need to do in Australia is, yeah, just the, it's the people that need to get behind yeah. the artists more. You know? Yeah, yeah. In terms of numbers online, right? Have you ever have you ever heard about um, streaming farms? Yeah, of course, of course, man. What do you, what do you think about that? And what what was your reaction when you first heard about that? Man, and what is that? I, by the way? I don't know. I really when I see a lot of the big labels, and then I'm like, no, nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think they. <laughs> I think these numbers are all. You know, it's. I mean, if you look online and you find the information, yeah. you can see that they made a lot of these labels use streaming farms. Yeah. Yeah, to boost their artists and boost the numbers or whatever. But I don't know, man. I, I I'm not I'm not a numbers online numbers thing. I'm more like focus on the content, mm. what you're creating, and the and the people will receive it. You know, it's yeah. really I've, I I know I'm, man. I, I've seen people with numbers, 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 and then they put on a show and they can't even get fifty people to come to the show. Ooh. So it doesn't yeah. add up. You know? It really yeah. doesn't add. Up up so i just man it's it's yeah focusing on the numbers for me and like the whole streaming farm thing yeah. and labels using streaming farms to boost numbers it yeah doesn't, it doesn't, yeah it looks good it but, looks good online but yeah it's, it doesn't it's a real real life you know but but to play devil's advocate bro like people gotta eat right and so yeah. they're thinking of you know ways to I to eat I feel you, but like, who wants to eat, man? I, like, I don't know, man. I I, I want to eat like home cooked, yeah, and not chicken nuggets. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I hear you. I, 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 yeah. I want to eat something that's good for you. Uh, uh, uh. No, I, I hear you. That's good for you. But, and if you if you have if you're an artist that has a whole career based on fake numbers. Mm. At the end of your career, you're gonna feel like, what did I achieve? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what what did you achieve? Like, yeah, the career based on but some but some people will be like, no, that's fine, right? Because I don't want to be a starving artist, so yeah. it's okay, whatever. I'm yeah. an industry plant. I don't care. At least I got to tour well, the world. Cool. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I mean, everyone has, man, everyone has their vice, bro. Like, yeah. it's, everyone's different. I so you. For me personally, I don't know. I think just my journey with music and where it started for me, mm. it's so it's so personal and it's so ingrained to like treat it with care yeah and yeah I, it's you know i mean i started this journey when i was eight years old so it's like it's been my life's work you know yeah up yeah until, yeah up to this point you know so i i don't know my the way i t treat it is just a little bit different yeah know? have you sold your soul yet <laughs> <laughs> i never sold my I put it in the soil, you know. <laughs> I soil my soul, bro. Right, bro. Do you know the documentary called? I think it's something like the Devil and the Guitar or something nah. like that. Do you know that story? It's about it's nah. about this it's about this artist, right? Who who wanted to learn how to play the guitar, and he was terrible. He'd go to all these taverns, and he was terrible. And so he says that one day he was at a crossroads. He met this man. And this man said, if you sell me your soul, I'll make you like one of the best guitar players, right? This is in the US, the real story, Damn. right? And then, and then all of a sudden out the blue, like his guitar game was, was one of the best. Damn. People started loving him. I gotta watch it. You, you gotta I, I, watch I, I, it, bro. You is it on Netflix? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It my is. You gotta watch it, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my question is, bro, why wouldn't you sell your soul? Like, what are you gonna do with it? Come on, man, the soul is like, I'm I'm reading a book right now called The Seed of the Soul. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, and it's 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 not something to you know take lightly. Yeah. You know? It's not something to take lightly. It's just, I don't know. I, I I feel like when you're connected to your soul, you're at your best. And if you sell your right. soul, 
and you'll never be at your best, you know? What does it matter when you sell it? What, what if you sell it like, you know, when you're much older? Nah, I don't know. Something that you just, you, you can't sell your soul, man. Come yeah. On, for real. So what do you think sense. about when people talk about things like someone you're selling, selling your soul power. and music? If you, sell, if, if you sell your soul, you're selling your power, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if that is, is like the whole selling my soul in music is just a, sometimes I think it's just like people are experiencing a level of success that not everyone can experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there if, you go. I, I sometimes I think of it as like a concept of of you know like I'm never gonna reach that level so yeah you know I'm gonna throw some negative spin right. on it like it's, it's, it's all I really don't I can't I can't fathom I don't know I I don't delve into that whole Illuminati yeah. world and I don't I really mm -hmm. don't delve into it because you know until you're in that space then you can know. But yeah. if you're just assuming, if you're just assuming and it's all based on assumption, or you know, like based on because I haven't experienced it, you know, then mm. it's really just an assumption. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not nah, true that, bro. Because I think like tomorrow, if we see you, you know, touring the world, people are gonna be like, like you sold your soul, you sold, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, because they're going to be like, nah, nah. Because nah. he went from IG Live to the world. Nah, nah, nah. It doesn't make I, sense, we, right? But, but then... You know, I think there's the aspect of, like, putting your soul on the line. That's, like, a whole different thing, yeah. you know? You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, I think, man, if I'm touring tomorrow, it's because maybe I put my soul on the line, you yeah. know, I put it out there. Right, but, but, right. Yeah. yeah. But, talking about, like, souls and, and the music industry, have you ever seen, like you know, behind some of these doors? Have you ever seen things that made you go, whoa, okay, this is a, this is a crazy industry? Uh, man, you, like, to be honest, I've never been behind the, any of those doors. I've never put myself in situations to be behind any of those doors. Wow, so, okay, okay. You know, you know, it's like when you feel, I, 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 I always, I don't know, I just have based my career off, like, the vibe I get with people, mm -hmm. initially mm -hmm. meeting them, you know? Yeah, really meeting them, and and I don't. Yeah, man. If 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 it's not vibing, then I'm not gonna be. I'm just gonna tap out. You know, wow. so keep it moving. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now nah, that's pretty dope, bro. I honestly think like maybe like centuries from now, people are gonna study you as an artist, bro. <laughs> you know, to be like to be like something's going on here. This this brother almost seems perfect. You know what I mean? Like you need to find some skeletons in your closet. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like you what? Hey, go look him, bro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say, bro. Like, like you weren't even curious to look behind these doors, you know. You know what I mean? You're always focused, you're always like on your game. Like it's it's just so dope, bro. It I'm really is very, appreciated. Man, like you know what? I'm just very like purpose purpose driven because yeah? because I don't feel like say with music, I really feel like blessed to be able to do it. Because yeah, I know yeah, yeah. Like, like, I know a lot of people that wish they could do music, you know? Mm. And I, mm. for, for me, it's like I've always just naturally had this, this like chemistry with creating music, you know? And, and, and so I really don't take that for granted. And I've always just looked at it as I want to use it, you know, to the, to the best of my ability to, to just deliver something that I'm going to be proud of even yeah. when I'm gone from here you know looking down on it I'm yeah really proud of what it brought yeah well. yeah, yeah. That, that that level of discipline bro and just being focused on your goal do you reckon it it has something to do with your family that's well, definitely man like I, I i think definitely uh family values definitely come into play like my dad was very just a very committed family man uh -huh. You know, and, and but also not just committed to the family, like definitely very committed to community as well. And I and I right. play a lot with my dad and my parents. Just the way that you know he's so invested in, say, church, his his church and the choir at the church. And if you look at the choir at the church now, of like from thirty years ago, my dad is like the only member that's probably still there. Oh wow! You know, wow, in bro. The, same in the same choir you know and, and he's yeah. just been there and even just in the church kind of like parish like my yeah. dad 
and my parents have just man they've they've they're one of the longest standing in that yeah. parish you know yeah. in in that community and it's very you know we could tell all my parents like come on move we, like i live in the city now it's like move, move yeah. to the city you know like you're older now the kids are all out of the house like you guys can yeah. just live your life and move but my my dad's uh you know his his commitment to commitment mm -hmm. is it's so strong bro and it's just like i, I actually admire it so much right. that he's uh, so okay. committed to being to what he's committed to yeah that you know yeah yeah it's really i think that's something that's ingrained in me when it comes to say my craft like with music my yes. heart just my being is mm. is being mm. very committed you know and, be, and 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 if i'm gonna be this i'm gonna be committed to being this you know yeah yeah right yeah. so bro what would you say to like young people who are like man i i want to do it the way that you're doing it because you're so focused but i don't want to be broke <laughs> as well so <laughs> i would tell them that i'm not broke <laughs> yeah or not, like in terms of like in terms of you know people say either you have to be a struggling musician yeah right nah or or you know you have to choose either or so what do you say to young people who are like yeah either i work or i do music but if i do music then i'm not gonna have money for a while so how do i how do i find that balance i mean i, I would say focus on creating something that's worth something yeah you know so like it's it really comes down to if you're gonna choose to do something then you really gotta focus on creating that how you in what you're doing mm. <laughs> and that and and god will take care of the rest you know what i mean like god will make sure you eat mm. you are bringing value into what he's created so it's, it's, that's how I, I look at it and that's the advice that I would, if there's someone younger than me that wants to get into this mm. i would say like bring va value to others in what you're doing you'll be you'll be fine you'll be able to do it for your whole life you know yeah yeah it's not like uh, I mean I don't know it, it it really comes down to what you what you value as um, right uh, what what is you know like it's it's about like what Bob Marley said about being rich you know mm -hmm. I don't know I, 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 I the whole concept of not being able to take any of this tangible stuff with us when we go it, seems, it plays a big part in a lot of my decision making because you know and, and you know it's, it's tangible things man like things that we can buy yeah. and you know then th those things are not of importance to me man i'm really yeah yeah, yeah. nice to have it while you while you're here but if you can't take it when you go then what can you leave and those are the things that we should be focusing on is when we go yeah. from here what are we leaving behind you know what i mean yeah, yeah good point yeah. good point bro do you sometimes just feel like the stars just align perfectly for you no nah, never well let me explain right so you, you your last name already or oh, already <laughs> right for starters <laughs> for starters you know what i mean and then like you know you've got this family you know that that seems to be like the ideal family online you know what i mean you're a handsome brother you're talented it, it seems like it seems like you got the cheat codes bro nah, nah. you know it seems like you got yeah you got the, you got the cheat codes bro you know what i mean and don't you ever look at it like that and be like uh hang on a second man like uh, i think that you know i i really got really yeah i look, man you know what i look at it as a responsibility to be honest yeah <laughs> it's a responsibility to like do something good do something great with it you know yeah 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 and and, and, and yeah that i don't know that a lot of work comes with that responsibility you know right. like a lot a lot of um committing a lot of a lot of yeah a, a lot of work goes into you know being, being given something you can't just be given something and, and expect that okay you, that's just going to work for you man like a, a lot of like honing of the craft has gone, yeah yeah I'm into it you know what i mean yeah yeah bro I, I, you know a lot of learning yourself like a lot of letting go of, like a lot of e the ego that ego shit yeah. in it man is that that has all come into play you know and and thinking you're just going to have it because you have it yeah man no that 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 
I don't think that works, bro. <laughs> so, you, so, bro, so you trying to tell me you don't feel like the stars are lying for you a little bit? Here and there? I don't, I don't know if it's stars aligning. I think it's just, you know, um, I think it's just being given what was meant to be. You know what I mean? Like, mm. yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the, the name being given the talent. It's just like, okay, uh, here it is. Like, let me give yeah. you these things about what are you going to do with it? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's still, the res that's why I say the responsibility comes in. There's still the responsibility on me because I could just have these things and, and not do anything with it. But being given the, being, being given it, the responsibility comes to do something with it, you know? Right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, like with the, with my name, mm. I don't think it was, it's, it's it wasn't <laughs> thought of like in a way yeah. that this is a name that's gonna be for music, right? Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. or gonna be for like being an artist. It wasn't even thought of like that. I definitely, my parents just named me after somebody. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right, right. No, that's an interesting. I'll tell you I... my like my. I always say because I I, I want to touch on like the name thing. Yeah, my middle name mm. is so it's a G. My oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it's Gordon. You know, and yeah. I always say to my parents, "Damn, you could have called me Michael Jordan Champion. That would have been like the oh, it would have been that would have been dope. Bro, one letter away, man. So I'm like, that would have been the greatest name. Yeah, that, that would have. Wow, that would have been dope. Wow, you would have been MJ. Wow, that would have been really dope. <laughs> Snap. Okay, yeah, that would have been that would have been superb, bro. Yeah. yeah so man. you know, I had um. You know, some some um, young ladies be like, "Oh snap, really, my champion? Oh, for real?" You know, and it just had me thinking, bro. Like, I've known you for such a long time. Yeah. Not once have I ever heard like a rumor about you, some girl or some groupie, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like, do you have a good PR team or what's going on, bro? <laughs> good nah, PR, you know what, bro. <laughs> good PR, bro. Like, honestly, with me, bro, I don't know. I've always I grew up like in a family of women, yeah, and black women and and i'm just always i don't know and, and also when i come back to my dad like i've just always seen the way that my dad has respected my mom and and i don't know he's he kind of instilled that in me so i just have never i don't know it's i never used my music as a means to anything other than oh, what, right. I, what i wanted to use it for yeah. you know what i mean or, um. I don't know. I just, I don't know what. It, like honestly, I don't. I don't know. But I just, I know it's. I've always had that respect for women, it, like instilled yeah. in me. And I've yeah. never been like. I never. I've never ever been a. A guy that's like a one night thing, or like mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's just. I don't know, man. It's never, it's never been my vibe. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> But obviously, I like, I like the, deep, like deep, deep conversations, deep conversations, yeah. deep, yeah, intera deep interactions. You know, getting to know people. So yeah, that's more important to me. It's but I imagine, time. yeah, there would have been like groupies and that. You know, so what would you say to them? Just now, nah, I'm good, or I don't just didn't pay. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not getting into like <laughs> don't say anything you don't want to say. But I'm just no. I'm, just I'm saying. saying like. like you can say anything, bro. I can say anything. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I didn't pay mind to it. You know, yeah. I didn't. It, like that, it wasn't that kind of shit. Is not even on my mind. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know. I think you you got a good heart, bro. You got a good heart, and it's not saying anything about me. I'm just saying, just by itself, like you you got a really good heart. But be, but I know it comes with the territory, you know. And a lot of people say, like you know, um, if you're gonna be with an with an artist, just prepare to be cheated on, you know, uh, because there's a lot of good things. I don't know, bro. Like, like I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I say. That's exactly what I say. You know. So um, that is another assumption. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. That, that's another assumption, and I and I think a lot of people have fallen into that trap. Yeah, like a yeah, lot of, yeah. A lot of artists, a lot of artists have fallen into the that trap, you know, and become victim or done stupid shit because of that. Because of the fact that that's what artists are perceived to be and yeah, to yeah. do, or that's what perceived goes on in the music industry. But I don't know, man. Like to be honest with me, another thing like. When I talk about my family, mm. like my parents, like 
even when I was like 18 up until now, mm. have at all on my shows, there's always that level, there's always been that level of respect okay. in in the space. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. I've always had that level of like holding that kind of respect in the space because my family is here, my parents are here and, and yeah. it's and a lot of times it's like when I do shows after the shows or in the parties after whatever, I'm with like my family and we yeah. are enjoying that. We are okay, enjoying okay. the time together, you know, and in and enjoying those moments and celebrating in those moments together, you know. Right, so my, okay. my, my mind is, is, you know, elsewhere. And and like straight up, bro. I, if I want to be straight up, like I've been in love with the same woman since I was like nineteen years old. Yeah. So. Snap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. Wow. I'm not. Ashamed, I'm, not uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. And if you listen to my music, mm. you will hear like all the stories of that in my music and just how profound it is yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah right so moving away from music what's your secret bro you made it last you know this long you know just as in like man to man what's your secret i was crazy you asked that because like the other day bro i wrote a song about about it, this the song was, it's on the next ep it's called wonder okay <laughs> you know and it's really just like that bro it's like it's being allowed or allowing you know your significant other to wonder and being okay with it mm. allowing myself to wonder and it's, this is not just based on other people other relationships it's just based on life like there's an aspect of life that we cannot control you know and i think mm. some mm. people try to control that with their partners you know some right. people try to some some people try to control that space. They try to like say, no, you can't think of anything yeah. else, or you can't yeah. think of this. Like personally, I don't do that, bro. I'm just like, yeah. I, I I I love because the idea of that wonder is is where you learn your lessons, and you also like in that wonder. That's where you, I feel like that's where you you have to make a choice. Okay. Yeah. And that, yeah. And then that, and that choice is where the growth in life comes and the growth in relationships comes you know yeah it's really it's you you have to the way to make it work is to allow your partner to be themselves like all the way through and in, yeah. and evolve yeah. all the way through and it's a constant like it's a constant journey of of mm. like shit, i don't know this person now and mm. like one year mm. you know like i've been with this person for 10 years i, I don't know mm. them now you know, uh, and, uh. and they don't know me now because we've changed, we've evolved. That's that whole thing of evolution that I was talking about. It's like we've evolved into something else. So now yeah. I got to like, now I got to like start again, which is beautiful because it's like you're, I'm back to that stage of like getting to know somebody new, right. even though it's the same person. And, and say in my relationship, it's just that we do that over and over again, bro. Like we mm. always, we're always becoming somebody new, always becoming someone new. So we always, it's interesting. We're always interested in each other because mm. we are, we are constantly evolving into something else, you know? Right, right. I hear what you're saying, bro. Are we yeah. going to see you on the red table, bro? Do you know what the red table is? Yeah, you might, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you might. You might, I might, I might make a table on my own, bro. You might make right. a table on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's all key. So what's 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 next for you, bro, other than the music? What are sort of some things that we can look forward to? You know, man. either let's say for the rest of the year or, or maybe like in the next year or two. Yeah, definitely, man. Like I'm uh my priority is finishing these two projects. So I'm in the I'm in like the mastering stage now and I've shot like three music videos. And the first project entitled Gap Year, I have, you know, uh there's about six songs it's, a, it's like an ep there's six songs in mm. it and so uh, i have six videos that all like wow. lead to each other almost wow, like you bro. can watch all these videos as one kind of one kind of thing wow. so that's, that's dope bro yeah and i've started shooting the videos already so the videos will be out the beginning of next year you know it's maybe like the end of january yeah and then once that's out i'll do i'll definitely you know be doing a few shows and then from there i'll definitely drop the black magic yeah um, yeah yeah 
and then right, like, right. Have you ever, have you ever like, in terms of like your your music, have you ever had sort of like packages? And what I'm talking about is like, let's say someone, if for a certain amount of money, they'll get like uh, the the physical copy, maybe the vinyl, maybe yeah. a T-shirt, maybe a signed poster of yours or anything like that. Have you ever done anything, or would you do anything like that? Yeah. Definitely, um, I've never actually done like a full package like that before. But um, the, at the moment, like the, the my website, like the merchandise store is being made, and a lot of like new merchandise coming out, like new a lot of new designs. You can see like this young boy sound t shirts you know, like it's it's, a, it's just like a sample t shirt. Yeah, but young boy, young boy sound is like it's always been my thing. Like my f- first album was entitled Young Boy Old yeah. Soul, and and. And so it only right. I kind of evolved it into young boy sound just to, um, you know, like turn it into like a, a merchandise kind of label, but also push a movement, you know, as far as uplifting young boys. It's always mm. been my main thing is to, you know, like influence young boys to be greater and think greater mm. of themselves, you know, and and so that's. That's definitely coming is like the merchandise store next year. Right. Okay. Okay. By the way, bro, have you have you been skydiving before? Skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do all those. I don't do, I don't do all those like things that are what? You know, not intended. Bro. <laughs> 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 oh, that's where you're going. Uh, <laughs> snap, bro. Nah, you gotta. You should do it, bro. So, so I'm guessing then no bungee for you, no none of that. Oh, yeah. Ah, bro, you gotta live a little. Have you done? Have you at least... done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, bro. Of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Have you um have you done the the Darwin swimming with crocodiles at nah, least or swimming with shark? I've been to Darwin ah, quite a few bro. times. Bro, you gotta do it, man. Yeah. So, what's what's like the most extreme thing you've done? Like, I nearly drowned, bro. Like in Miami <laughs> Beach, bro. and I had to get saved, bro. For real. Are you serious? That's, oh, that's as extreme bro. as it gets for me. Yo, where was that? <laughs> Don't say like last week, please, bro. <laughs> nah, nah, that was like two, two years, uh, like two years, three years oh, ago, maybe on Boxing Day. That for real. Mm. What what what, what yeah. happened? Were you were you drinking a little bit or? Nah, I wasn't, bro. I just had, I had like I had just woken up in the morning and, um, yeah, just like a friend was like, "Come on, man, let's take the paddle boards out and stuff." And I'm like, "Paddle boards?" Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I've never been paddle boarding before. And then, and he's like, "We're gonna take the paddle boards out into the ocean, like manly." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And nah, I, didn't, I couldn't even get past the waves, bro. Next thing. The paddleboard over there, and like this dude had to jump off the cliff. Was yeah. sitting there with his girlfriend. <laughs> he had to jump off the cliff and like save me. Are you serious? It was crazy. Snap, bro. Crazy. So, what was it that um, was it the body of water? What could, can you swim? Because you can yeah, swim, I, right? I can swim. So, of course, I can swim. Yeah. What happened, bro? So, <laughs> what happened? I don't know, man. It was just kind of like you know when you make a decision that you're like, damn, why did I make this decision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think this yeah. through. It was yeah. it was one of those moments, really. Yeah, Snap, bro. So so they rescue you. Yeah, they, you're there on the beach. What what are they doing? Like CPR and stuff? Nah, like... nah, none of that, bro. I just walked. I just I was fine. Like I mean, I took oh, you me back to the shore. I just went back home. <laughs> you walked it off. <laughs> back, walked it off. I walked it yeah. off. Bro. I contemplated my whole life, <laughs> all my decisions. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! Yeah, nah, I can imagine, man. But hey, it's good we didn't lose Mike, nah. man. Nah, nah but, that, here, that, that would have been crazy. Now the reason I was saying that is that you know when when they um when you go skydiving, um just before you go, you get on the plane, they whip their camera out, right, and they're like, uh, any last words for friends and family? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I remember hearing that, and I went, what? But that's, that's literally crazy. what they say, bro. They're like. Yeah. Because you know anything yeah. could happen, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Anything could happen. Yeah. You know. So I, I guess I'm asking you, bro. So as we come to an end, you know, what are your your final words to the world? Man, I honestly, just find your truth and run with it. You know, that, like that. That is that is what I would tell the world. Like find the thing that brings you joy. You know, that brings the people around you joy. You know, find. The the thing that is delivering greatness into the world that is unique to you because I feel like everybody has something in them that is 
unique to them you know we're all we we all are given that you know it's just it's just a matter of like really connecting to the soul you know when i talk about the soul and never selling my soul it's like I, if i sell my soul i sell the thing that you know is is that i should be putting into the world so it's it's really um if you can find that connect with the soul find that great thing and then really like hone into it practice it whatever you need to do and run with it you know run with it keep on delivering it to the world just keep on delivering it to the world without any expectation for receiving anything back you know i think i think that that's the one thing I, when i look at my music um i want to deliver it in a way that i have no expectation of receiving any anything back from it you know i don't mm-hmm. I, that doesn't that doesn't really matter to me is the receiving back it's just what i can give because the giving is the receiving snap for me snap, snap. yeah well wow, thanks bro absolute pleasure bro like wow you got a good heart man mm-hmm. good soul bro look Thank you thank you so much man thank I really you, appreciate my it bro brother, yeah. man it's so good to see you bro you look yeah. good man <laughs> thanks bro we got, we we need we need to get together in real life i'm going to be in, sure. melbourne, uh, yeah. in melbourne are you in melbourne yeah i'm in melbourne now yeah, yeah, yeah i'm going to be yeah. in melbourne um in a, like a month from today just all so. bro just all yeah, bro yeah just all 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 right to connect all good all good bro good seeing you again you yeah too, bro all right peace, peace. <laughs>